Hello and welcome to Young and Digital as we continue our journey speaking to political and business leaders, asking them about their vision for Young India. Joining us today is Uday Kotak, Chairman of Kotak Bank. Mr. Kotak, thank you very much for joining us. So, first question, you know, uh, before I ask you about uh, the overall sense of what Young India means to you, what does it mean to you as a person? You know, what, what, what are the images that connect with you? What comes to mind when we talk about this country which is largely below the age of 25? I see the Young India of today uh, probably different from what I think Young India was when I was young. Okay. And uh, I suppose that's a part of the cycle as well. But Young India of today, I feel, is very, very decisive, mm -hmm. uh, has much smaller time horizon, mm -hmm. is restless and impatient, mm -hmm. and wants everything yesterday, okay. and is far less subtle, if I can say, mm -hmm. bold and ready to say what their mind thinks. Mm -hmm. And at some level, this is refreshing. Mm -hmm. It is also coming out of confidence mm -hmm. of a more secure India today mm -hmm. than what we had mm -hmm. uh, 30 years ago. And, and what does this mean personally? I'm saying uh, at home, uh, amongst, let's say, family, when you see younger people, how, does those con how do those connections play out? I think the connections play out in a sense that when I talk to my kids, we talk more as equals. Okay. And that's something which I don't recollect doing it with my father or my grandfather. Right. Here, my sons believe that they can talk to me as equals. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we uh, are happy and encourage it. And uh, there is this sense of we know it all with the younger generation as well. At times, I think probably a little ahead of the curve as well. Right. So there is a need for uh, uh, some balance. Mm -hmm. And as one has learned over the years, you know, there is no shortcut to experience. Okay. So what are the kind of issues, let's say, uh, your children are engaging with you today as we are at this cusp of change, uh, with a change in government, with a new uh, way of maybe a new order, perhaps? Uh, very, very cut and dry in their approach. Something is good, something is cool, something is mm. not cool, something is needed to be chilled. Mm. So everything is in terms of a very cut and dry approach to the broader political and economic and civil society discourse uh, we have. Mm -hmm. And I see uh, them having a view about everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the things which I feel the young India also needs to focus on mm -hmm. is having a view on everything with depth mm -hmm. versus a little bit of view on everything with contempt. Okay. So now let me put this in the context of the changes that are happening, right? So we will, uh, we are going through a process of elections, we will have a new government. Now, a lot of things that have to be done have to be done in the context of this younger population in India, which has to be given jobs, their aspirations have to be met. So now speaking as a, a business leader, running a large enterprise, employing so many people, and creating the multiplier effect for other jobs, maybe as a lender, as a financier, and so on. How, do you, how, do, how does this perspective uh, come in? I would love to see young India do a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, many uh, youngsters I keep on talking about when are we going to get our own Google, mm. our own Apple, mm. our own Facebook, our own Twitter mm. created by people mm. from this country and hopefully in this country. Mm. And one of the things on technology which I have found if you look at India's success, it is much more in the field of services mm. and much less in the field of products. Mm. I think the creative young India mm. should go out there mm. and create some products mm which can then be multiplied the world over. And I would therefore strongly urge mm. people to be bold, people to be different, mm -hmm. and take your chances because this is the India which can bloom a million flowers. Right. So if, if I were to now ask you as someone who has a position of responsibility in this era, in a way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, political leaders have the position of responsibility because they have to create policy uh, which creates the environment to do some of these things. Uh, you perhaps have a business leader's responsibility. How would you interpret your own responsibility to address the needs of this new generation? I think really two parts. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, India really needs to decide its priorities. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas which we really have to grow dramatically is the whole angel investing and venture capital space. Mm -hmm. uh, we really don't have an industry around that mm -hmm. in the financial sector. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if I was thinking about it from the policy point of view, mm -hmm. what does it take mm -hmm. for creating significant independent pools of money mm -hmm. which are available to angel investors mm -hmm. and as well as uh, early stage venture? Mm -hmm. Because 
even if we get a low percentage of success, mm. the multiplication of that is huge. Okay. Number two, mm. as a part of this, I always like to encourage mm. people who have ventured out on their own mm. and then decide, decide to come back to the formal job market. Mm -hmm. I think they come with much greater experience and learning mm. than somebody who's really not been out there and tried it. Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing which I think is a very important factor. And financial institutions and corporates mm. should in fact encourage people who come from entrepreneurship back into professional jobs. Okay. Third, I think this is the whole area of what I call as redefining India's priority sector as a bank. Mm. And I think policy should look at this. I think the RBI governor has mentioned about this, mm. but priorities have to be relevant to today's times. Okay. And maybe angel investing and venture capital mm. should get a boost within the priority sector umbrella as well. And last, but certainly so not you're, the you're least. You're saying don't geographically disperse yeah. and say financial inclusion. Absolutely. Talk about entrepreneurial inclusion. Absolutely. Mm. And as a fourth part to it is what I what is popularly known as SMEs. Mm. Small and medium businesses mm. will be the heart of India. Mm. And this is where I would love to see how we can finance, how can we be bolder in that, mm. how we can expand our banking network to be able to be out there for a lot of small and medium businesses, including those started by young people mm -hmm. or developed by young people, mm -hmm. both in services and even more important in technology and manufacturing. Okay. So let me ask you the slightly grim question because I, I guess I need to ask it. What happens if we don't do this? I think the biggest issue for us is mm -hmm. jobs. Mm -hmm. And we need to get 12, 14 million new Indians okay. every year mm -hmm. gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. And I would say the single most important agenda mm. for any government mm. has to be to create opportunity for jobs. Mm. Now jobs can be self-employed, can be working for people, mm. can be a whole host of things. Mm. And I actually see a huge confluence of what was traditionally called services, agriculture, ma manufacturing. Mm. There is a blurring of sectors mm. and we as policy need to take advantage of this blurring of sectors and create a flood of gainful opportunity. Okay, so and let me ask you one more specific question along that line now. So you, you talked about this whole challenge of creating 11 million jobs. New government is coming in, uh, which, whoever it is and whichever manifesto they, uh, they own and want to implement. How will this get played out? Because in some ways this is also an urgency. It's not something that can is of distant policy making. Absolutely. And first of all, I would love to see a new government mm. which is pro-business, mm. not necessarily pro-businessman. So that is an extremely important thing. You need to create a environment mm. which is favorable for business and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. We also need to ensure that as we do that, we create a hell of a lot of opportunities across the width of business, both in manufacturing, services, and quasi-agriculture. Mm -hmm. And through that, through this intermingling, which I think is uh, getting more and more pronounced, mm. where you can't define something as manufacturing or something as services. It is a con congruence of jobs. Mm. And around that, mm. policy should make it easy. Mm. And we must lead to seeing significant growth mm. in the small, medium enterprises across the length and breadth of India. Right. So you talked about the whole entrepreneurial ecosystem with venture capital and so on. Now, is this something that banks like yours are in a position to drive individually or is that something that needs more regulatory uh, drive or oversight? No, there's lots we can do. Mm. And we are very active in trying to promote this entire area of small and medium businesses. Mm. But the area of venture capital engine investing requires a policy framework. Third, we need to figure out our laws around jobs. Mm. Uh, how are we going to tackle some of the trickier uh, political issues. Mm. And finally, we need to see a financial services industry mm. and the banking industry included to get out of shackles of bureaucracy. Mm. We are out here, our primary role as a financial services institution is to serve the real sector. Mm. And somewhere I feel the financial sector from time to time mm. meanders away from its first fundamental job, which is to serve the real economy. Right. 
So now let me ask you about uh, you know your consumers. I mean, a lot of young consumers, uh, or rather, you own a lot of young consumers, or a lot of young consumers bank with you. How are their preferences deciding the way uh, your strategy is being fashioned? Or flip, if I were to flip that question, how are you catering to this segment in order to own them better for the future? As I think about it, over the next five to ten years, none of the consumers or the young consumers of today may go into a bank branch. They will like to see some real estate around to feel comfortable, mm. but they will be dealing online. Mm. We have started a number of uh, initiatives online, mm. including the Kotak Jiffy mm. account, which uh, makes it possible for young people to open an account in a Jiffy and with all the conveniences. Mm. We've got a very attractive mobile platform. Mm. And for us, digital mm. and Kotak Digital mm. is the way to capture the young minds and hearts. It is the driving force for us. We believe that the banking world in the next five to ten years will move more and more away from branches to online. Right. So you're also saying in some ways that all the innovation that's happening in this building is being driven by young people out there. Absolutely. Or primarily being driven by Absolutely. young people. Absolutely. A lot of the money mm. today is still with the older guys. Mm. So as the younger mm. guys get a lot more of the money, yeah. they'll become bigger and bigger part of our strategy. Let me now take you back. I mean, you talked about, you know, how things were different when you were young versus how they are for if you were. If you were to start again today, how would you do things and if you were to do things differently? Uh, in my time, uh, uh, we had a huge amount of time between an idea and an execution. Mm -hmm. If there's one difference I look at today, that arbitrage is transient. Mm -hmm. You really have to, besides having great ideas, you've got to be super, super good and fast on execution mm -hmm. because there is somebody out there who will take your lunch if you take too much time on execution. Mm -hmm. Therefore, speed, time are becoming a lot more of essence mm -hmm. for the younger generation and for the businesses of the future. Right. And that does not mean you sacrifice on quality. Mm -hmm. so it's and easier and tougher. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And more and more, the profit pools of businesses mm -hmm. will convert to consumer surpluses because consumers and the younger people will expect a lot more things free, mm. which our generation was used to paying. Mm -hmm. So the consumer surplus is back in the favor of uh, the younger generation, mm. and businesses' profit pools per transaction will keep on diminishing. So one thing you would do differently if uh, you were to, again, start again today as a young Uday Kotak? Uh, I, would, uh, I would try and figure out how I can create with 50 people a WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, you're saying you may not do a bank, but instead... I, I, I'm fascinated by how technology mm. is making our lives different. Mm. I'm coming from an era where, there, when, till I was 15, there was no television. Mm. Till I was uh, 28 or 30, there was no mobiles. Mm. So, we have seen world without television, mobiles, but when I look at today, mm. the speed of change is enormous. Mm. And the way to a business mm. is through some significant movement on technology. Mm. Financial services actually is getting more and more to be a technology business. Mm. So, last question. I mean, if, if I were to ask you for a sort of, not like a message to the youth, but really if you were to sum up the two or three points that you feel young people should keep in mind. Uh, some of them want to become like you. Uh, others uh, want to maybe come to you for help uh, or others may come to you for finance. What is your... My, my uh, first of all, the young generation, I congratulate you for your speed, your levels of understanding, your ability to be secure and stand up on your own, have a mind and speak it. These are all huge pluses. Mm -hmm. However, my advice is, in addition to that, please be clear that there are risks out there and most of the time, the challenge in business and in real life is unintended consequences. So when you decide on decision A or B, please think through uh, all the potential consequences and therefore think deeper today rather than having to worry about it tomorrow. Keep your spirit, keep your agility, but be alert, think deeper, focus on insight, focus on judgment, and as you go along your path, mm. you will make a few mistakes, mm. learn from them, mm. and get better over time.
It's a good note to end on. Thank you very much for speaking with us, Mr. Kotak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.